Good people, so you just finished building your system like I have with this MicroTX machine and this interesting Coolmaster enclosure, but are wondering what to do next in terms of the initial BIOS uh, configuration, Windows installation, drivers, and what to do when you get inside Windows for that proper experience, you know? So let's talk about all that plus some hardware tips along the way. Probably one of the most important things when it comes to cable management in this day and age, since uh, the 16 pin 12 volt high power cable is so troublesome, is to make sure that the bend at the GPU point where it's connected is not bend into oblivion. So make sure that the curvature of the bend is large enough and there's no tension at that connector. You can actually zip tie that cable to the top of the power supply. That way you avoid any tension built up by the connector and all the tension will be actually supported where the cable tie is located by the cable itself and not by the connector, which is really, really important to minimize any risk of potential fires and stuff, you know? Before the first boot, I always remove the side panel and power on the case without the side panel on both sides. That means if any cables get eaten by the fans or something goes wrong and I need to get in there and unplug certain things, I have access just to make sure everything is safe, you know? So powering on the system, the first thing you wanna do is press delete in order to enter the BIOS. And you can start hammering away on the delete key as soon as you see some lights going on on the PC case. You don't have to wait for anything to show up on the screen. Just go and then boom, we're inside the BIOS. The first three things I look at when we get into the BIOS is the CPU temperature, because regardless of how many times you've built a computer, you might still forget to peel the sticker off an AIO pump or an air cooler. And the CPU temperature will immediately, you know, grant you that information if uh, we're getting cooled properly or not. The second thing is DRAM status, not just the speed, the speed doesn't matter right now, but the actual uh, sticks and which slots they're located because I've had sticks being properly seated in the motherboard with the clips properly attached, but the memory was not recognized. And that's not because the memory was faulty, it's because the memory was not actually seated properly in the motherboard. XMP right now is disabled, which is fine. And the last thing would be our storage information. This would be a really good way to make sure that all your drives are recognized. Before we install Windows, let's update the BIOS. So we go on the manufacturer's website, type in the BIOS for your particular motherboard, download the latest, but be careful because some BIOSes require a previous version of the BIOS install first for everything to work properly. So with my Z790M Plus D4, it didn't say anything about uh, compatibility with previous versions of the BIOS. So I downloaded the latest one and let's install that together. Fun fact, this black USB drive is for my BIOS installation only. I don't know, I've been using this for years. So let's plug into a USB port. Let's go to advanced mode, tool. So on ASUS, you can flash the utility directly from the BIOS on many, actually pretty much on all motherboards, you would be able to do this. We navigate to our drive storage device. We find the exact name of the BIOS. So right now we're at 0602 and the BIOS is 1604, so I'm way behind on the BIOS updates. We select that and we select the cap file. The cap file is the BIOS. We click yes because we have not set up BitLocker recovery key and we want to read the file. And now we don't touch anything. I have plugged in the USB stick into the case front IO, but most of the time when I'm updating BIOS with like really critical machines, I always plug the USB stick directly into the motherboard just to be safe, you know? I have updated many motherboard biases in the past and I've never had it stuck. Sometimes it might pause, you know, it's maybe it's reading something from USB or writing to a certain area of the motherboard, but uh, just be patient and let it finish. All right, update successfully, system will be reset. Click OK. Right now it's going through a few reset processes and it you know, tells you to not shut down or reset the system. Don't touch the keyboard, don't touch the USB stick. This is very important because now you can actually see the BIOS revision has been updated. So we've updated the BIOS correctly and now we can press F1 to run setup, go back into the BIOS and install Windows. Now here we can verify the BIOS information is correct. And the next thing to do is we can unplug the the BIOS USB stick. Uh, XMP, we don't want to touch that yet, but I know that the system is perfectly stable because I've used this motherboard and this set of RAM uh, in the past, but before installing Windows, people tend to recommend to leave XMP disabled or like the overclocking memory on Intel or the DOCP on AMD, just because it will give you that peace of mind and stability when we're installing Windows. Another thing to consider is to disable multi-core enhancements, especially for that initial setup process, because ASUS loves to feed the CPU with lots of power and voltage for good performance. So we can disable it and enforce all Intel limits which is actually going to be great for our CPU temperatures, if that's 
something you care about from the get-go. Another big thing to consider in the BIOS while we're here is that if you're using a riser cable, we want to make sure we set the proper link speed for that riser cable depending on your hardware. So now I'm going to navigate to advanced. I would go to PCH configuration, PCI Express configuration, and here we have the G4 PCI Express lane, and you would choose between Gen 1 to Gen 4 uh, link speed. So if you're using all Gen 4 hardware, motherboard, graphics card, and uh, the riser cable, normally auto should be fine, but sometimes it's nice to select it to Gen 4 to avoid compatibility issues. And also if you're using older hardware, selecting Gen 3, uh, on some of the older motherboards as well will uh, eliminate you know, that black screen, uh, things not working properly. Now, for some reason on this motherboard, you know, actually to access the PCIe Link configuration for the PCIe Lane where the graphics card is plugged in, the G5, you know, based on the manual, I found it. Uh, here, we have the option to select what speed the actual uh, PCIe Lane works at and this is again something that you can play around with in case you're experiencing black screens with the riser cable. Some motherboards interestingly also have full fan control via the BIOS so right now we have Q fan configuration with this ASUS motherboard we can enter it uh, so for the fan profile here I would go into PWM mode for the fans and you can also select the speed of the fan if that's something you're into but the more important thing is that if you have an AIO you just want to make sure that this is set to full speed just to make sure our temperatures are under control. So this new mid tower definitely has room to breathe, okay? That is with my largest graphics card installed. Good luck finding something that doesn't fit <laughs> or something that has better lighting than those gorgeous four Lightwings 140mm fans. The view from the front and back. I love the integrated cable bar with two positions, full dust filters at the bottom and the front, the versatile fan and ARGB hub, rotating PCIe bracket, 420 rad support and of course noise dampening basically a very be quiet enclosure the shadow base 800 effects check it out below as for windows installation this is where my green drive comes in i always use this one and you can create your own uh, media installation tool and i always recommend you download it yourself and make sure that it's up to date because it will give you the most recent drivers and so when you install windows itself you don't have to wait an hour for all the drivers to be updated so make sure to use the most recent bootable media installation to install windows let's plug in my usb now we can go into a boot override setting so it's going to be under boot and boot override right here this is where the windows installation media is located actually over here the lexar usb flash drive and the thing is we are just overriding the boot for this particular boot sequence we're not trying to change any of our default settings for the boot properties once we override here we don't have to worry about this booting back to usb once windows is, is, is installed so right now we should proceed with standard windows installation i normally stick to the default here we're gonna click install now i don't have a product key you don't need this for installation we're gonna select windows 11 home and so here i left this because the m.2 drive i'm using already has windows installed on it so let's say you're reusing a previous drive that you might have had windows on you can safely just delete every single of these partitions Okay, and now we have unallocated space on our drive zero. And I would recommend that once you're installing Windows, if you have multiple drives plugged into the system to unplug them, because see, they're not labeled. They're just drive zero, one, two, three, whatever. And all you have information wise is the actual capacity of the drive. So unless you know how big the drives are, I would recommend you unplug whatever you don't want Windows to be installed on. And now we can just click next. It's gonna copy Windows onto the M.2 and after that it's gonna fly. Every time I reinstall Windows, I always go through the BIOS and through this type of procedure with a bootable USB drive and not going through the reset or the refresh setting in Windows itself because that takes way too long. It doesn't fully clean the drive and like other remnants of previous stuff might still be on the main storage device where the windows was installed so i would definitely recommend you do this and it's also way way faster especially because if you download the windows media tool and all the updates are already kind of built into that package this is definitely the way to go all right so now we are ready to restart and since we only did a boot override for that particular instance it's not going to boot back into this usb stick so when we see the black screen when we see a little icon pop up it's safe to remove the usb drive on which the windows media was located and now we should just go back into that uh, continuing of the installation with Windows 11. Now the Windows installation media normally carries 
you know, the display drivers, the networking drivers and etc. But strangely, my motherboard doesn't have Wi-Fi, so I would need to install manually LAN drivers and then plug in my Wi-Fi card in order to access everything. So now we're on the screen, we can just select your, your region. I'm not gonna add a second keyboard layout. This is the part where I don't have Wi-Fi installed and I even if I plug in the Wi-Fi card right now, it won't find anything because the LAN drivers are not installed. And so this is where a little tip, you go shift F10. So we type in OBE backslash bypass NRO. So we're bypassing the network requirement on boot, whatever it's called. And now we're gonna restart back to the same page, but we'll have the option to skip uh, the that initial Wi-Fi setup. If I had Wi-Fi on this motherboard, I would gladly sign into my Wi-Fi without any issues. But now we can see we have the option to, I don't have the internet over here. I don't know why it's not there by default, but anyways, we're gonna continue with limited setup. We're gonna name the PC, let's do micro ATX. No password for now. I normally disable everything because I do not use any Microsoft product aside from Microsoft 365. But do you guys recall in previous days with Windows 7 and earlier, whenever you were trying to reinstall the OS, it would always show you a percentage or some sort of progress bar. And now we just have empty words. <sighs> Give me a percentage so I know how far along we are. All right, we're almost there. Woohoo! Okay, so we are finally in desktop mode. I have already pre-downloaded drivers for this particular motherboard on a separate USB stick. So let's plug that in and install my LAN driver so that when I plug in my Wi-Fi card, it will actually do something. All right, we're connected and it's gonna install Armory Crate software. I also changed the time zone because if that's not correct, then the Windows updates don't properly work and you might encounter issues of like error, 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 and that's because the timing is not right and the Windows system is freaking out to say like, wait a second, something is not right along here. Now, before we continue with Windows updates, I want to go ahead and make sure that all the chipset and drivers are updated on the motherboard first, because I find that speeds up things along the way. And now Armory Crate. <laughs> Uh, this one's gonna take a while. So while that's updating, let's go into our power plan, power options, and let's go into additional and high performance. And that just means that while all the updates are coming in, everything's being updated, even at default settings without changing anything in the BIOS, definitely the high performance mode, that initial setup helps a ton. We also have a few things to do with the task manager. So first of all, change graph to logical processors so you can see what's happening on each individual thread. I like that very much. You can double check your memory speed is at 2133 or it's like the default one before enabling XMP, which we'll do later. I do appreciate that they finally added the ability to check out the temperature of the GPU, which is right now at 39 degrees, which is perfectly fine for this thing. So we're not worrying about that. And of course, one more thing is that for the startup apps, I go in and disable crap I don't want, like OneDrive, Cortana is disabled, and uh, I guess I don't have anything else installed on here. <laughs> so. We don't have many other options, but normally after re reinstalling all your applications, this is definitely a place I would revisit. Another tip for the recycle bin, if you right click, go into properties, you can display delete confirmation dialog, which is very, very important and click apply. So if let's say it comes to you deleting things, as soon as you try to delete things, it will pop up with this dialog. Like, are you sure you want to move this to recycle bin? Because if that's not enabled, as soon as you click delete, it will immediately be you know, removed from your system. And I just like that little piece of confirmation. My goodness, Armory Crate, you are slow. So while that's happening, let's go into our private set settings and just disable of things. So I don't want websites to use my things. I don't want this. I don't want this uh, and I don't want this either. So <laughs> just disable everything. While this is happening, let's just check how many updates we have on the Windows side of things. I haven't had any issues of like downloading this while everything else is updating in the background. It might be a little slow. All right, we can finally look at our chipset drivers from Armory Crate and I will just do download and install and this will restart a couple of times. That's just the nature of installing chipset drivers and updating things on that first an hour and a half after installing Windows. While things are updating, definitely make sure to go into view, show and file name extensions. It's very important so you can actually see the file extension and it's not an executable, it's a JPEG. And when you rename it, it's smart. It highlights only the file name so you can go green, but you also can accidentally highlight the whole thing and rename it 
and uh, at least they'll give you a warning that, hey, wait a second, you shouldn't do that because you're renaming the file extension. While things are installing, we can go into notifications and actions and you can disable notifications for certain things like Windows products and stuff. Microsoft Store notifications, I don't want. And here is when we don't want way to get most out of Windows, getting tips of using Windows or this as well. Oh my God, finally, all the chips and drivers have been installed. Let's restart and then resume with Windows updates. The good thing is that while we're updating chipset drivers, the OS drivers were kind of piling up in the background. So at least some of those will be installed upon this you know, first restart. But man, how much do I wish this had a percentage indicator or a progress bar because this means nothing. Uh, I hate empty words. Now, while we're on Windows, the right click functionality is just horrible. I hate needing to click show more options. You can do a registry edit. You can just Google how to do it. It's very simple, but you can also just hold shift. So that's something if you don't want to mess with registry editor, this is a very quick hack. Windows updates download some drivers for NVIDIA, but we are going to download directly from NVIDIA. So we're going to go NVIDIA drivers download. While that's downloading, let's go into NVIDIA control panel. Just change the refresh rate of the monitor quickly. Let's go on 20 hertz for now. The reason why you want to download them directly from NVIDIA, AMD or Intel is because they'll be the latest ones. And also, I personally like GeForce Experience now because of uh, shadow play and like you can record your screen and it's not, it's way easier than needing to use OBS and set up all the parameters and stuff. So I personally like GeForce Experience just for the recording of the screen alone but you might not. And you can go into custom, but like see Express is just recommended. Custom is uh, if you have previous drivers installed, but not right now we don't have anything installed, so it doesn't really matter. So after the graphics driver is installed, let's restart the system because we have a pending restart after the OS updates. So the black screen is for the, uh, the graphics drivers and it's not a problem at all. All right, let's restart. And hopefully that's gonna be the end of it. Oh, now you decide to show me a percentage. All right, fantastic. Another restart? Oh my gosh, this is the longest Windows installation ever. So our chipset drivers are good, our graphics drivers are good, the OS drivers are good. So now it's time to restart, go back into the BIOS and make sure that we have XMP enabled and a few other settings. All right, we're just gonna go and enable XMP directly from this uh, favorites page. That way we're no longer running 2133, we're running 3200 megahertz. So I'm gonna go ahead and restart the system, make sure that the XMP profile has loaded onto our memory and not tweak with anything else in the meantime. So just make sure that, you know, you go one by one to isolate any variables that might cause issues with instability and such. Go back into the BIOS, go back into our advanced mode and let's see, what is our memory frequency? Yep, 3200 megahertz, 1.35 volts, all good. If you're an Intel motherboard and like to take advantage of the integrated graphics card for some uh, acceleration with Premiere, for example, on this motherboard, it is disabled. So we go to system agent, we go to graphics configuration, and we can enable the iGPU over here. So that way it can actually show up in my task manager. Otherwise it doesn't even show up. I also appreciate the ability to save all the settings you've done to the BIOS as a user preset. So right now on ASUS, we go to tool, we go to ASUS user profile. We can go down over here. We can name it to something like stable and we're gonna save this profile to one. So now that's gonna show up over here. And what's good is that, you know, if you reset the BIOS and don't wanna go through all the settings manually once again, you can just load it from this profile and you have different profiles for potential experimentation with overclocking and etc. The thing is, I would love to know what you guys do with a new Windows 11 machine. If something we've missed or something that is a must for this OS, let me know in the comments. I'm Dimitri, thanks so much for watching. I'll talk to you in the next video.